I don't like high places. You can't fight. I yield! Please, no more! You can't see. You're afraid of heights and almost everything else, probably. What are you doing here, Sam? What's the deal, my people? You know it is Don Tony Teflon, and I'm back at you another one. And in Game of Thrones, foreshadowing is key. And in this video, I'm going to show you why Samuel Tarly's whole story is connected to Jon Snow. And anything that Samuel Tarly does is to better Jon Snow. Now, since season one, any line that we have heard any character say is setting up for the end game. And that's easy to see when we use this comment right here. Blood will always tell. You'll hang for this busted. Now you also can't get confused because a lot of foreshadowing they use is to throw you off so that they don't give away a major plot point. Alicia. He was no dragon. Fire cannot kill a dragon. Now this still could be true, but we've seen that the fire did hurt Jon Snow. Now we know he's only half Targaryen. And if they would have showed it not hurt him, it would have gave everything away right off the bat. So that's what we're doing in this video. We're looking at things like this from the show to predict exactly what's going to happen with Sam and John because Sam's whole story is tied to Jon Snow. Now if you watch and like this video, if you can, please subscribe and help us try to reach that 100,000 subscriber dream and thumbs up this video so others can also help us reach that dream. Now we can see conversations between John and Sam that have turned out to become something. An easy one to see that you may have not remembered is when John and Sam were talking about women for the first time. A whore named Roz. <laughs> what color hair? Red. Oh, I like red hair. Now we can easily see how that foreshadowed the coming of Egret into John's life. But is there more to that? Because there was more to that story between him and Sam. So, why exactly did he not make love to Ros with the perfect? What's my name? John Snow. And why is my surname Snow? Because you're a bastard from the North. Because all I could think was, what if I got her pregnant? If she had a child, another bastard named Snow. So in season one, we see Jon Snow afraid to have sex with a woman because he does not want to have a son or a child grow up as a bastard. And then we see in season seven, Samuel Tarly come and save the day. At the Citadel, I transcribed the High Septon's diary. He annulled Rhaegar's marriage to Elia. He wed Rhaegar and Lyanna in a secret ceremony. So John sends Sam to the Citadel, and while there, Sam finds proof that John is not a bastard, but the legitimate king, so now John does not have to be afraid to have children. Also, while there, Samuel Tarly cures Jorah Mormont of grayscale and how does this tie into Grant John Snow well they were able to have this conversation it's yours it serve you well and your children after you John tells Sam that he's scared to have kids because he doesn't want them to be bastards like himself he sends Sam to the Citadel Sam finds proof that John never was a bastard he saves Jorah from Grayscale. Jorah then gives John his blessing to keep Longcore so it can serve his kids 
after him. Right from the beginning of Game of Thrones, we see that it's going to take a combined effort of Jon Snow and Sam Tarly to stop the White Walkers. And right when they take the black, when they're about to say their vows, we see the first sign of this. Why would you forsake the gods of your father and your house? The Night's Watch is my house now. The Seven have never answered my prayers. Perhaps the old gods will. And when Jon Snow goes beyond the wall, he goes beyond the wall with Sam Tarly. And what do they go there to do? They go there to say their prayer and take their vows in front of Weirwitchery. Alright? So they say that in front of the old gods. Now, while there, after the vows get said, what happens immediately after that? We see ghosts come up with a hand of the white. So that is how we know that Sam and John are the people to defeat the White Walkers. Again, way back in season one, we see Sam Tarly explain to John Snow exactly why he is at the wall. And we can see this payoff in season seven. On the morning of my 18th name day, my father came to me. See that sword? It's called Heart's Bane. Been in our family for 500 years. It's Valerian steel. Only a handful of them left in the world. You're almost a man now, he said. It's supposed to go to my firstborn son after I die. To him. But you're not worthy of my land and title. He will never wield that sword. If he were to become Lord Tarly of Orn Hill, it would be the end of this house. And this leads Samuel Tarly to steal Heartsbane from his father. Now, as I told you from the beginning of this video, anything Sam does is for Jon Snow. So Sam took this sword for Jon Snow. So why does Jon Snow need this sword? He already has a Valyrian steel sword. Well, there's only two reasons why he would take this sword. And the first reason is this. We've wanted one of these in the family for a long time. And well, now we have two. Two? The original weapon was absurdly large. Plenty of steel for two swords. Now with the wars to come, there is no doubt that this sword could definitely be melted down. They have Gendry up there and made into two other swords. We've seen this already with ice and we know that Jamie Lannister now holding Widow's Whale is on his way to the north and we already have Brienne with Oath Keeper up there. So we have ice back at Winterfell. So they could chop this sword up and make two more swords and have for more other people. One could go to the Hound, maybe. One can go to Arya. You know, it could go down like that. That could be the reason. But there is also another reason that we could look at. And if we look at Gilly and what she says at that dinner, maybe that is a clue. He risked his own life to save mine more than once. He's a greater warrior than either of you will ever be. And we know Gilly was definitely right about that because we know how it ended for both of them on the field of fire. So, it's really not that what I want to talk about, but it's what she said a little bit before that. Killed a white walker. <laughs> There's no such thing. I saw it with my own eyes on our way down to Castle Black. He drove a dagger into the walker's heart. Now, wait a minute, Gilly. I know you want to stand by your man and Sam has got your back and you got his, but that's a lie. He did not drive a dagger in the white walker's heart. He stabbed the white walker in the back. That is what we've seen. But why would she specifically say, drove the dagger into the white walker's heart? So the proper translation for that prophecy would be the prince or princess who was promised will bring the dawn. Doesn't really roll off the tongue, does it? No, but I like it better. And you believe this prophecy refers to me? Prophecies are dangerous things. I believe you have a role to play. As does another. The king in the north, Jon Snow. 
So Melisandre tells Daenerys that she has a part to play. She doesn't tell her that she's the prince that is promised because she doesn't think she is. She thinks she has a part to play. And what part is that to play? That is the part of Nisa Nisa to be stabbed in the heart. Sam Tarly just got a sword called Heart's Bane. I also think it's possible that since it was Sam that was looking at the Valyrian Steel Dagger, that he may use this dagger to actually stab a White Walker in the heart. And I also think that it's possible that when you heard Sam say he likes redheads and they did show Egret, it could foreshadow Jon Snow being with Sansa Stark when it's all said and done. So you tell me in the comment section what you think. And if you like the way I do this, please thumbs up this, please spread this across the realm, and please subscribe. And until next time, you know who it is. Peace and stay sexy. I want him dead. I want his family dead. I want his house burnt to the ground. I want to go to the middle of the night. I want to piss out of that. What? I said no more shines. Maybe you didn't hear about it. You've been away a long time. They didn't go up there, they? I don't shine shoes anymore. Relax. What are you for crying out? What's, what's got into you? I'm breaking your balls a little bit. That's all. I'm only kidding with you. Sometimes I mean, you don't sound like you're kidding. You know, there's a lot of people around. So say good night to the back. I got two grenades in my house. I crawl up on Mulberry Street the phone. Understand? I don't know what I do. You understand? I die with.